Hello. 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 Hello and happy new year. So for me personally, 2021 was kind of a big year for content creation. I restarted this channel and finally got to be on film sets again after them being mostly shut down for almost a year. With 2021 having come to a close, I figured there was no better time than now to go over some film equipment and pieces of gear that I acquired over the year and how they made my year a whole lot easier. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in. First up, we have my main camera at the moment and the camera this video is actually being filmed on, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. Now, I know I've talked about this camera ad nauseum, but I figured it was worth bringing up one more time. With amazing color, raw, tons of color depth, and even internal NDs, this is by far one of the best value cameras on the market. In fact, I think it might be the cheapest camera on the market with internal NDs. Now, obviously this camera is great for social media work, like kind of what I'm doing right now, but it also packs enough of a punch to be able to deliver decent commercial work as well as narrative work. Now, I know it's not gonna be used on a ton of medium to larger size sets, but for little stuff, it gets you by pretty well. Not to mention, it delivers a ton of resolution. So if you ever wanna crop in, or especially if you're doing composite work, it's great for that as well. Not to mention the improved color science that came with the 6K Pro has immensely improved skin tones and has overall helped the color science of Blackmagic cameras in general compete a bit better with the competition. Now, the last thing I'm gonna mention is the menu system is literally one of the best menu systems I've seen on any camera system. I've used Airy, RED, Panasonic, Sony, and by far, this is one of the best menu systems. The only one that maybe comes close is perhaps Airy, and that's a whole different league of camera, so not something that's super comparable here. Now, there are quite a few drawbacks of this camera, and if you've seen any of my past videos, you know that I'm not really afraid to call them out. So, if you wanna go ahead and check out any of those, they mostly have to do with the form factor, go ahead and check up there. That'll kind of give you some of a rundown, but there are quite a few, so if you're interested, check them out. If you're not, on to the next thing. Now next, we have a tool that I've been using almost as often as the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro, the Aperture Amaran 200D. So this is part of their Amaran line, which is their lower end line. But surprisingly enough, this light delivers way more than I expected. Now, originally I only got this light to work on social media projects. I didn't really anticipate being able to use it on film sets as it's mostly made out of plastic and didn't seem that durable. However, once I got it and put some light modifiers on it, it actually packed a huge punch. And not only that, the plastic casing on the outside was actually pretty durable, along with the tilt head being able to handle a lot of weight, which I didn't expect. I kind of thought the yoke of the more professional models was basically the only way to go. So having something with a tilt head that could actually hold the modifiers without much issue, I'm not against it. Now, finally, I was worried about the fan noise. However, the Mole Richardson I have actually right behind me produces far more noise than the 200D, so not really an issue in my book. However, it could be an issue to sets that are really sensitive about it. Now, if you're interested in hearing more of the ins and outs about this light, this is another thing that I actually made a video on. Uh, this was actually the first video I made when I came back to this channel, so go easy if you look at it. It's I was definitely rusty, but there's more detail there if you wanna check it out. Now, let's move on. But before we do, if you have time and enjoy the video, a like is, as always, very much appreciated. If you wanna see more like this, a subscription is also very much appreciated. But if not, <laughs> that dislike button works extra well if you hit it twice. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, we come to my monitor, the small HD 702 Bright. Now, if you've been on set recently, you'll probably realize that this isn't exactly a new monitor, but it is basically an industry workhorse. The monitor itself is actually so ubiquitous that I believe I've seen it on basically every set I've been on this year. Whether it's as a director's monitor on a smaller set, an AC focus monitor, or even an on-camera monitor, although usually those are the 502 models. So this monitor has definitely been out a while, and it's not even the brightest. So why did I pick one up? Well, first and foremost, they are super common on so many sets. So the nice thing is you can take the monitor out, you can literally just hand the box off to somebody, say, please go set this up, and you don't have to worry about it. Because basically everybody on the camera team knows how to set up these small HDs. 
Now, of course, this isn't the only reason I'd get it. It's incredibly reliable, durable, comes in a compact package, is fairly easy to use, and has an insanely powerful menu system, which is probably the second reason why most people get it. The menu system not only has been developed throughout the years, it is very similar across a large variety of small HD monitors, which means that a lot of people know how to use the menu system as well. Now, I personally finally picked it up so that I could, one, have an on-camera monitor, but two, I can also rent it out as part of my kit while I'm ACing so that I don't have to go to a rental house and pay them the fees. Now, again, these are very durable and reliable, so it's not necessarily a bad item to buy used, although test all the ports and make sure it works once you get it if you do buy it used, but buying used is how I got mine. So towards the end of 2021, I finally wanted to upgrade my AC kit away from a toolbox because basically I've been using a toolbox for all of my AC sets for the past three, four, almost five years. So I figured it was finally time to upgrade as the toolbox with the amount of stuff I had in it was finally starting to hamper my efficiency. Finally, I ended up settling on the Pelican Case 1510 with the Trek Pack insert. Now I also ended up getting the Jason Case lid organizer and that way I could have a ton of pockets at the top with all my little items on the top and then I could keep the bigger stuff down below. Now the nice thing is I was able to take my AC pouch which I would normally wear on my belt and slide it into the case as well as a small tool bag that I can also put in the case so that I can take both of these things out, I can wear the pouch and I can keep the bag on a camera cart without having to open the case and go back through it to get to various tools. So for me, I think this is gonna work much better, especially than my old toolbox. It not only looks more organized, but it helps my efficiency and allows me to get to a ton of items way quicker. So not something that's super exciting, but it was exciting to me and well worth the purchase. Now, the nice thing is that case can also be used for a ton of other things. So if I ever wanna take all my AC stuff out, I can, and then I can just reshift the Trek pack as needed for say lenses or cameras or whatever I wanna put in it. And with that, it hits on a critical point that I feel isn't really talked about enough. Having good base essentials on set, like a solid case or a good monitor, can be truly invaluable. It not only helps you with your reliability, your organization, but it looks more professional and, quite honestly, is far more important than having the newest toy on set. So those are some of my favorite items that I picked up this year. But let me know what items you picked up and what gear has helped you out the most this year. If you have any questions, let me know down below or hit me up on Instagram as I'm much more likely to respond quickly there. As always, I hope you learned something or at least saw some cool stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.